You're listening now to The Real Estate Lab with Beagut. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Real Estate Labs with Beagut.com. Summer is almost over, temperatures are dropping. However, will that be the case for the real estate market here in the UAE and the off-plan market in particular? Today we have a very special guest, Farouk Saeed, who is the CEO of Springfield Properties. Farouk, thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, Chris. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's not a problem. Uh, and an honor to be here. Well, actually, this is the second meeting of the day. It is, actually. We met today in the morning at the gym. Yeah. Uh, so, Farouk, how's, uh, how's the, the year been so far for Springfield Properties? I mean, it's been a great year, uh, Chris. You know, I don't think it comes as a surprise that the Dubai real estate market is on a very great upward trajectory and yeah. uh, we're all enjoying, uh, you know, the benefit of that. Uh, this has been, I know you guys have probably heard this a lot of time, but it's been a record breaking year for Springfield Properties as yep. well. Our team's grown quite a bit. Now we're over 100 people, um, oh. real estate agents inside the office. Um, as you guys are aware, we do a lot of off-plan real estate mm -hmm. and all the developers are bringing in a lot of new inno uh, innovative products out of yep. the market that's really helped us scale up as well. Uh, the prices have been going up quite a bit and mm -hmm. that's where off-plan is becoming a lot more attractive now. Has there been any dynamic changes in the demand over the last six months? Oh, definitely. I think um, since the prices of the ready properties have gone up so much, mm -hmm. people are now looking more towards the off-plan segment. Mm -hmm. um, as a company, nearly 70% of our business is off-plan real estate. Right. So all of our clients that are coming in from overseas. So there's been a lot of people coming in from overseas that are coming in to buy um, you know, real estate or their first property in Dubai. Yep. And off-plan is what they would prefer because the prices are always slightly lower yep. than what you would get for a similar property in the ready market. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes uh, don't, uh, currently right now, Dubai's real estate market, there's not so much availability. Yeah. So if you're going into most of the ready villa communities or even in your sort of more prime areas in Dubai, like downtown, Palm, you don't get uh, great availability. So mm. a lot of times we're, you know, meeting buyers that first want to buy something ready, but they can't find anything that fits their requirement. Yeah. And then they revert, uh, you know, and go back to buying something under construction. Now, obviously the payment options and payment plans have quite drastically changed over the <laughs> last couple of years. Yes, they have. Um, however, what, what would you say is the sort of the attractive payment plans which are being offered to people at the moment? So most of the bigger developers have now uh, made the payment plans a lot less um, attractive in a way that you don't have yeah. your post handovers with the big boys. Uh, they generally are either 70-30, which means you pay 70% of the property value during construction yep. time, and then 30% or 20% upon handover. So mm -hmm. if you take Imar, Damag, Shoba, any of the tier one larger developers, yep. that's what they're offering. If you go towards the mid-market segment, all right, and uh, more towards the private developers, there are certain areas and certain developers that are still giving you, um, you know, uh, more payments towards the handover part so you can yep. go up to 50 percent or even up to 60 percent upon handover okay and then there are a few developers that are still giving you post handover payment plans so if you go into jbc there are a few developments that still offer you three years post handover yep. four years post handover three and a half year post handover payment plans as well so it all depends on um you know which market you're sort of looking at if yep. you're looking at villas and townhouses then you're probably going for more of the tier one developers because those are the guys that yep. are developing these large communities and mm -hmm. then you you don't have those post handover payment plans there but if you're going for apartments and you're sort of aiming towards the mid-market segment then you do have more options where you have a uh, larger payments towards handover or even in certain cases post handover payment plans yeah but the, the question i want to ask at the moment is how are developers sort of remaining competitive? Are they having to up their game in terms of finishing? Do you see any new people coming into the market or who have disrupted the market in the last couple of years who have put a certain level of quality on something where uh, people are now having to reach that level? 100%. I think there's been a huge change in the kind of quality yep. that is now being delivered. I feel like the buyers that were here five, six years ago probably didn't enjoy the kind of quality that now developers are giving. So all the developers have really upped their game when it's come to uh, 
the design, aesthetics, even the quality that they're offering now is at another level. Plus, obviously, the payment plan option makes it an attractive uh, proposition, especially for overseas buyers that are coming in and buying their first property as well because they don't have a mm -hmm. bank account set up. It's difficult for them to uh, open a bank account just from the get-go. So mm -hmm. it's easier for them to transfer funds directly to a developer. Yeah. So that is a big market for us as well. I think there was a, a study that was recently released by Dubai Land Department where they showed in the quarter two of 2023, we saw a little under 15,000 transactions that happened. I think it was 14,700 transactions that happened in off plan as compared to the quarter two last year was a little under 10,000, close yeah. to 9,000 transactions. So that's yeah. nearly a 60 to 65% increase in the number of transactions in the off plan segment. I think when you look at numbers like that, it just, it just makes um, an individual as an investor a lot more confident in sort of where this market's going. Yeah. It's not going to be slowing down. There's still yeah. a lot of land available here. Okay, probably a little bit more limited along the sea and the coast. However, you start moving further out, there's still a lot of availability here and it's, it's not going to slow down. Yeah. Um, so it's real positive signs and, uh, for the real estate market and for people for who sure. are moving here and want to invest in it, which is great. One interesting thing that you said that there's not a lot of availability in along the sea or even what we define as prime areas mm. so what i think now the buyers need to be looking at are more prime areas because that has seen the maximum growth okay. in terms of prices so um, obviously the luxury segment like palm jumeirah and we have other communities like dubai hills emirates hills yeah. that is sort of the upper upper tier yeah but then you have uh the one tier below that as well which is still defined as prime which is your downtown dubai creek harbor uh you know these areas have seen such a drastic growth in prices and there's still a lot more opportunity over here. So Farouk, we, we hear a lot of uh, terms such as launches, pre-launches, uh, under construction, um, but to the end user, what sort of risks are involved in purchasing off-plan properties um, at either one of these stages? Is there any element of risk or in general, what sort of risks uh, are involved. So obviously the Dubai Land Department has been working tirelessly to make sure that the risks are mitigated. But obviously whenever you're buying um, an off-plan property, there is some sort of inherent risk because the property is still not constructed. So A, making sure that the property is constructed as per what the developer is saying. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you could promise the world and then not end up delivering what you promised. Mm -hmm. So obviously the developer reputation is extremely important. All right. Uh, for an end user, there are some basic things that they should check before they purchase an off-land property. For example, is the project registered with Dubai Land Department? Now that's super simple to do. You could just put in on Google Dubai Land Department project status tracking. It pops up the website. You just put in the project name and it should show up mm. that this is the project. This is the, de uh, the developer. This is the uh, number of the project and this is the current status in terms of construction. If yeah. it's 1%, 10%, 20%, 30%. So as an end user, it's super simple to do and you should check that the project is registered. Uh, second, an end user should make sure that all their payments are going into an escrow account. Yes. So they should not pay the developer into the developer's bank account. Okay. Every development should have its own escrow account, which means that the developer cannot use those funds for anything besides the development of that project. Until a certain amount is completed. Exactly. So right? there yeah. are certain stages of construction that they need to reach before they can start to claim money from that escrow account. Okay. And this is obviously overlooked by the Dubai Land Department for the safety of the investors. Things like project delays can still happen. Things like things not delivering as per the standard that the developer promised. So that's where developer reputation is always um, important for an end user to look at the developer's previous construction to judge their future developments. Look, just uh, one more question around the, the off-plan, more for the end users. What sort of legalities are around buying an off-plan property? Is there anything they should know? So um, obviously anyone who's looking to buy an off-plan property should definitely go over the booking form and the sale purchase agreement, or at least uh, look through it to make sure that there are clauses that protect their interest. A lot of times we get buyers that say, oh, we just put down a de booking deposit, but we want to cancel uh, the purchase now. So mm. that is one thing that is not possible. If you sign your booking form, it clearly states that you're 
booking deposit cannot be returned. So things like that, people should definitely look into it. Mm. Uh, they need to look at whether the, t- the timeline of the development is clearly stated on the contract. Mm. Um, and it clearly should state that if there is a delay during development, yeah. how they will be compensated for it. Okay. And if there's a delay in payments from their side, what are the legal uh, requirements that the developer can, you know, how, 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 how much can they charge in fines if you delay on a payment? Yeah. All of those things are mentioned on the booking form and the sale purchase agreement. Um, so buyers should look into that hmm. because generally a developer is allowed certain delay, which is uh, put forth from by the land department rules yep. and regulations, but anything beyond that uh, needs to be compensated for. Okay. So buyers should be aware of the basic legal uh, framework. I mean, uh, like I said previously, the land department is working tirelessly yeah. to make sure that investors' interests are protected. Uh, so Dubai is fairly, uh, you know, good yeah. with their systems and mm. uh, legal requirements because it's super simple now for someone to buy uh, an off-plan property. You could be sitting overseas yeah. and just make a purchase without even having to come down to Dubai. Who would be the one to, to, to give you that information? Would it be the uh, the agent who's proposing the property oh, yeah, to for sure. you? Or? The agent, it's, it's, it's the agent's responsibility okay. to explain all of these things because it, obviously yeah. that each developer is different. Of course. All right. Um, you know, things like we discussed earlier as well, like developer reputation and things yeah. like that can also be, um, you know, explained to the buyer by the agent. All right. Because agents uh, will give you sort of a, a holistic review of all the developers rather yep. than if you go to a de- developer, they'll only talk to you about their developments and how they're the best and how their, yeah. uh, you know, things are, you know, their contracts are the most fair. But an agent can give you sort of a holistic review about all different developers, uh, whose reputation is better, who has, you know, better after sale service and things like that, you know. So a lot of buyers, they sort of sometimes just go in and uh, prefer to go directly to a developer and then they get blindsided with a lot of these little nitty gritty details that they should be aware of. Uh, So Farouk, uh, I always like to try and sort of dig into uh, what's happening in your personal headspace in terms of projects and stuff like that. If you were to invest in an off-plan project, what one would you be looking at at the moment and why? I would go for sort of more prime areas that are still upcoming. Okay. So areas like, for example, Shoba Heartland, mm-hmm. Heartland 1 and Heartland 2 are very close to downtown and the center of the city. And there's still a lot more development work that has yet to happen in those areas. Mm-hmm. So I think those areas are ripe for growth. Like we previously discussed, Dubai Creek Harbor is another area that is definitely on top of my list because I believe that uh, it's so central. It has water. It has a lot more things that are going to be developed in the next five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So that is another area that I think is going to see a lot of capital appreciation. These two areas are more apartment based. If you could look at the villa communities, if you're going for something ultra high end, I think Talal Al Ghaf is a beautiful community. If you want to be in the $10 million plus segment, because most of their new launches are $10 million plus. Um, If you're looking at more sort of the affordable villa communities, then you want to look at the back lagoons. I think they have excellent uh, villas and townhouses. Mm -hmm. So if that is the sort of segment that you want to look at, I think that is a great project to look at. Okay, perfect. So Farouk, we're going to uh, play a game. This is the the new thing that the marketing team have me doing (laughs) uh, on a regular basis. Um, And we're going to play the Wheel of Fortune. Have you ever seen the Wheel of Fortune? Uh, Yes, I have. Okay. Well, um, basically, we're going to ask you or show you a board with some of the letters blanked out of a developer's name. You have to guess who that developer is. Okay. Seem okay? Ah, sure. No pressure. (laughs) I got two. Oh, you got two? Okay. So you need to beat me. I'm generally not good at these games, but sure, (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll, uh, try my best. So we'll give you some time. Have a think about it. So this is the first developer, okay? That's the name of a development or a developer? developer? And probably just look at the top one for this. I'll give you a clue. Well, Imar on top. Yeah. <laughs> Imar Properties. Imar yeah. Properties. Okay. Oh, thank God. Now, I'm, like, I'm, I'm wondering what is that really long name in the bottom? Okay. This is number two. Properties. The bottom. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, I'll pass on this one. Yeah. 
Nakhil. Oh my God. I'm telling yeah. you, I'm part dyslexic. I, got I can't word, right? see letters properly. You know, I'm telling you. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no shame in this. Yeah. When I see a lot of letters up and down, I mean, if I can't guess Nakhil properties, I'm ashamed of myself. Actually, <laughs> I got Nakhil right. That's the one I got right. I think it's the next one I got wrong. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris, for embarrassing me on <laughs> on, uh, on your podcast. It's not. Uh, it's marketing. They forced me to do it. It's not my fault. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the next one, okay? That's gonna be some. Miras! Got it. Me that. Oh! M E R A. It could have been Miras as well. Come on, I mean that. That's the one I got wrong. There is no letters here. Dead you. The R. The R. I knew it. I mean, you did, come on. You did, you did, it could be, it could did be either guess it. or. You did, uh, you did guess it. Uh, the R. The R. Before yes, I clicked the button. I got it. So we'll, get, we'll give him that one. We'll give him that Because I saw your face had a look of disappointment in it. And I'm like, okay, wait. It's the same number of letters. Shobar Realty. Yeah. Very Thank well God. done. He got he got five. I got all yeah, of them. Got Thank all you. Five. Thank you, Chris. It was a it was uh, a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> well, Farouk, it's been a great session today. Thank you very much for coming in. Have you enjoyed yourself? I did. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me here and uh, playing this little game with me. <laughs> well, uh, clearly a very um, insightful uh, guy when it comes to the, the off-plan market. So. Uh, I'm sure whoever watches will, will appreciate your, your information. Um, thank you for tuning in um, to another episode of the Real Estate Labs. If there's anything else you would like to see in the future or you'd even like to take part in the podcast, then please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you very much. You're listening now to the Real Estate Lab with Beyut.